Hello, everyone. I'm Miss Monica from the Glenwood branch of the Howard County Library System. I'm here today with Miss Christie, who is working behind the scenes to help me with this class. We are here for another episode of STEAM Saturday. I'm so excited to see you all this morning. And today, like our other classes, we are going to have some fun and we are going to learn about science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. This is a bi-weekly class uh, where we explore those topics with fun and easy projects that you can do at home. And just remember, this class is pre-recorded, so if you need to pause and go get the materials, or if you just want to re-watch something again, you can, which is great. Also, anything that I use that you do not have at your home, you can switch it up. Um, I'm using acrylic paints today, um, but if you only have watercolors, that's absolutely fine. So um, hopefully you have some of these materials or something like it at home. So this is May. Can you believe it's May? Like I see the summer ahead, which is awesome. Um, but May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And that's a month that we think about mental stuff, our brains, right? And our brains, just like the rest of our body, we need to keep them healthy, right? Exactly. So to keep our brains healthy, one thing that our brain does is it helps us with our emotions and our emotions are how we feel and our, we express our emotions through feelings. Um, and that's an emotional state to a reaction. So your brain reacts to something that is happening to you or in your environment. So for example, I'm gonna give you some examples of this. If your friend moves away, your best friend who lives, who's lived next door to you all your life might move away, you might feel sad. And that's your feeling. That's your reaction to that, that thing happening to you. If let's say your favorite toy breaks, how do you feel? Do you feel mad? I would feel mad too. That's how our brain is reacting to that, okay? What about if your grandma comes to visit? I love when our grandma comes to our house. How do you feel? You feel happy. You're excited to see your grandma. So that is a little bit about our brains and our emotions and our feelings. But we all have feelings and it's normal to feel the way you're feeling on something that's happening to you or that's in your environment. And we express our feelings in different ways. Um, for example, when you're mad, you might clench your fists and be all tense and you might, I know that I always make my furrow my brow like that. Um, there's different ways to express your feelings. Um, one way to express your feelings and kind of get those feelings out is through art and colors, okay? So have you ever heard the saying, I'm feeling blue today. If somebody's feeling sad, just know maybe not having a good day, they're feeling blue. That's right there because it's expressing a feeling through colors. What about somebody saying, I'm feeling sunny today. It's a sunny day. They don't mean literally outside that it's sunny, it might be raining and they're still in a good mood. Uh, yeah, the sunny, I think of yellow and that's kind of like a feeling for happy. So I'm gonna go over these. I'm gonna give you the first two and you're gonna get those right away because we just talked about those. So usually people associate the color blue with sadness, right? Can you show me a face that you're sad? Can you tell that I'm sad? Good job. Okay. And yellow, like I said, is like sunny and happy. And can you express yourself when you're sunny and happy? Maybe you clap. Yeah, exactly. Like happy. Great job. I love these faces that you're making. And we went over anger. Uh, sometimes people associate anger with red. Ready? Red, mad. Mad, mad, mad. Okay, good math, <laughs> good anger. <laughs> so, um, also, the color black is sometimes associated with fear or being scared about something. Maybe, maybe your older sibling is watching a really scary movie and you thought that you would want to watch it too. And it's 
that's really scary. Like you make a scary face. Like I don't like scary movies. So. <laughs> okay, good job. And then the color green is usually associated with calm and peace. So maybe like a yoga piece. Okay, good job. I loved your faces. They're great. So I found a book that expressed this perfectly and it's called The Color Monster. And I know I usually do our book suggestions at the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this book suggestion now. And this is by Anna Lalanis, and it's a fantastic book. Even our older listeners today, even our adults will appreciate this book. Um, it's about a monster and his feelings are all mixed up. He doesn't know what to do with all his feelings and emotions. There he is, all different colors. And this little friend here helps him to sort out his feelings by color. And it's exactly what we just talked about. So I wanna show you the page with yellow. There we go. And this book does a really good job with illustrations and different art techniques. And it's, that's probably why I really like it. Um, but it shows too that we can kind of group our feelings into different colors and use art to express them. Um, it's actually a discipline called art theory. There's actually art therapists that help people work out their emotions and feelings through art. That is like the coolest job ever besides being a librarian, of course. So there's blue. And I love these fish. They're like made out of cardboard. So I have to say that I love art and I love being creative. And when I'm having a hard day or I'm, you know, maybe a little angry about something, usually doing something creative calms me down and makes me happier. Um, so you could just paint your feelings, okay? So like we said, maybe you're feeling a little blue. So you could do just like the color monster, you can color that that blue, okay? Maybe you're feeling happy and so you could do yellow and you can paint this however you, paint however you would like. If you wanna like be really bold and graphic and abstract, go for it. Um, you know, kind of go messy and crazy. Like if you're angry, like that's really fun too. Um, get those emotions out with your paint and your paint brushes. Um, I'm using a, a canvas by the way, but use whatever you'd like. If you have uh, just use paper, that's fine too. So like we said about anger, do something red. Get that anger out with painting. It feels so much better when you're angry and you paint. Um, and then if you're scared about something, black, like so. Okay. And then we've got green to calm us down again. Okay. Like so. Then you can turn this into whatever you want. You can paint. I mean, if you want to do all of your colors in different animals and things, you could do that. Whatever you like to paint is great and get those colors out and get those emotions out through art. So in the book, The Color Monster, I think the, the color monster is so cool looking. And I just did a very, very quick sketch of the color monster. Let me put that a little bit closer so you can see it better. There he is. He's not looking like very happy, he's not really sure, but I'm actually gonna make him happy today because I'm really happy today. You can see I wore my yellow shirt. Um, I actually really love recording these for you all um, and being with you today. So I'm happy today just because I'm with you. And I think of you all at home having a good time, hopefully with these classes and it makes me happy. So hopefully you're happy too, you're yellow happy. Awesome. <laughs> so you could just, this is just very quickly sketched out. Um, just look at the book or, you know, you can do your own monster. You could do a big circle and make your monster that way too. Um, and then you're just going to paint. Okay. I'm going to paint them in. I'm going to do this whole thing because you, you'll get the picture of what I'm doing literally. Okay. And I just, like I said, I did, I outlined it in pencil and I'm going to paint them in yellow because today my color monster is going to be yellow and happy. 
Okay, like so. And when I'm done with this, I might need a second coat of paint just because yellow is light. I might wanna make it a little more vibrant by doing a second coat, it's up to you, okay? But when I'm done, I'm gonna go back over when it's all dry, gotta make sure that's dry. Otherwise it just doesn't work out and your pen will get kind of gross. But um, I'm just gonna use a plain black marker, a Sharpie if you have one. And I'm just gonna outline the marks that I made in pencil and kind of make my color monster pop a little bit. So that's a great activity that you can do at home and paint him whatever color you're feeling that day. Um, make a whole bunch of color monsters with all different feelings when you're feeling on different days, different feel emotions and different feelings. Uh, so I'll show you one of the ones that I did the other day, blue. So maybe he was a little sad that day. Maybe I was a little sad that day um, and I picked blue. I happen to also really love the color blue. Um, I'm in general pretty much happy every day, but um, I still really love the color blue. So I did paint him blue, but um, but there he does. He looks he looks a little sad in that picture. Um, but there you can see the finished uh, painting with him. So fun. The author really rocked it with this book. Um, I think it's a fantastic book. Highly recommend checking it out from the library and reading it. Read it with your grown up too, because grown ups also have feelings and emotions and. Uh, sometimes they've had hard days or good days or, you know, and they need to get those emotions and feelings out as well. So it's, it's a wonderful book. So I have a couple other books that I do want to recommend to you. And this is Art Lab for Little Kids. I believe there's another Art Lab as well. Um, even though this said Little Kids on it when I picked it up, um, I think it's for all kids and for adults as well, because the projects in here are super interactive and fun. And like I said, art is such a great way to express yourself and your feelings and get those out. So here is a spray bottle painting. So you can paint and then spray with a spray bottle. Great, great activity, especially now that it's getting warmer. You could go outside and do that. Lots of fun. Um, here's one that's called Not a Brush. And this is another fun one um, where you take like a brush, like if you have like an old dish brush, um, and then you paint with it. It's kind of like splatter paint. It's really fun. Like, so you can find different brushes and things and test those out. Ask your grown up first before you take any brushes. Like you wouldn't want to use their favorite hairbrush to do this activity. Try to find an old brush that they have that they're willing to give you. Okay. So um, this one's balloon. So just blowing up a balloon and then kind of like sponging it carefully so you don't pop the balloon onto your paint. That's really fun. So this book is filled with activities like that. It's Art Lab. It's by Susan Schwake. Um, and she did a lovely job with a whole bunch of different, it says 52 playful projects for preschoolers. I know you all are not preschoolers, but I still would recommend this book to you because it has so many fun activities. Um, I'm an adult and I read it and there was lots of things I want to try. Like I want to paint with a balloon. That's so fun. So great, great book. Now we have, this is another book that kind of is, is very similar in the fact that it talks about colors and our feelings and emotions based on different colors, but it kind of does it in a different way than um, the color monster. So I still wanted to recommend it to you. And this is My Many Color Days by Dr. Seuss. And this is a very non-traditional Dr. Seuss book. This is not filled with unique animals and different words and kind of tongue twisters that we're used to with Dr. Seuss. Um, this book is, is about our feelings and our emotions and colors. Let me just show you. Um, this one was one that we didn't talk about. And I was like, huh. And Dr. Seuss uses animals and paintings. This is not traditional Seuss. When I first saw this, I was like, this is, this is not a Dr. Seuss book. And I read the cover and I was, wow, this is Dr. Seuss. So he was a very talented artist and did very different things, um, including this book. So this one says, some days, of course, feel sort of brown, like a brown bear. Then I feel slow and low, low down. Do you ever have a brown day where you're just kind of sluggish and slow, like a bear waking up from hibernation? So yeah. Definitely check this out, My Many Color Days. Again, great book for not only our younger listeners, but our older listeners and also our adults as well. So that's My Many Color Days by Dr. Seuss. Really, the library has, as you know, 
tons and tons and tons of books, but we have a lot of books on art, on feelings, um, on emotions, on mental health, like lots of great books. So whatever you're feeling, um, there's probably a book about that feeling. Um, so I'm just gonna show you this one last. Um, it's called Ruby Has a Worry and it came out I think maybe like a year or two ago. It's by Tom Percival. I loved this book. Um, this is about a little girl who has, see the worry right there? She's worried about a lot and she has this worry that follows her around and as her worries get bigger, so does the little worry. It kind of looks like a little, like the color monster a little bit too. And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and she learns how to deal with those worries. And I'll confess, when I was a child, I worried about a lot. And I used to keep it kind of like this little girl, Ruby. I kept it in my head and I didn't really tell people what I was worried about. And once I, just like her, um, I did the same thing she did and I discovered that my worries got smaller and smaller. So this is a great book. Um, even if you don't worry a lot, I hope you don't, but if you ever have had a worry, which that's a normal emotion, um, this is a, is a really wonderful book to check out. I believe there's a companion title as well that the author wrote. So I haven't checked that out yet, but I'm excited to read that as well because Ruby finds a worry, addressed worrying in an amazing way. So your feelings. I'm so glad you all have feelings. It's completely normal to have any kind of feeling that you're feeling. I hope that after this class, you're happy like I am um, and you continue to have a great day and a wonderful month. We will be back with STEAM Saturday in two weeks. So ask your grown up to go to hclibrary.org and sign you up for the next episode um, because I can't wait to see you again. And don't forget, you can make an appointment now to visit the library. So come and see us and check out all our wonderful books and materials that we have for you. So thanks so much for joining us. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.